to User Testing Community. It is Mike McDowell once again from the Solutions Consulting team here at User Testing, back with another tip of the week. Now, this week's tip, it kind of made me feel a lot like I did last week when I thought I was going back to basics and explaining session units. Well, this time I'm going back to basics in a different way. We're going to talk all about the interactive path flow and how it actually works. I realize that I've done tips about the sentiment path. I've done tips about the intent, the instant insights panels, the AI, but I've never actually talked about how the actual interactive path flow works. So today we're going to get right to it, and here it is. Directly over here, you're going to see a task results output on the metrics tab for a Clinique.com study that I ran. Just ask them to go through and find the best foundation product for someone with acne. So I just wanted them to go through, find the right product, and of course, because it's foundation, I know there's going to be aspects of this that have to do with the color and the style, texture, SPF, all kinds of things, and it's going to make a really interesting interactive path flow. So I'm going to focus my attention over here now on the interactive path flow, and you can see right here, we've got the task listed up above. Here's that awesome AI summary task button. We've got here, generate summary. I'm not going to click that yet, but you can see I ran this study several months ago, and Backwards compatibility is a beautiful thing. So I could still generate a task summary of this if I wanted to, even though I ran the study long ago. Um, I'm going to scroll to get to the interactive path flow. So here is a representation of all of my users in this study, all my contributors. This is what they did. As you recall, moving down, highlighting their individual screen names shows us their unique paths. Now we've got some variability in this, and this is what's great about an interactive path flow, is you can see where you've got outliers. So I can see three potential outliers, maybe four or five even, um, of doing different things, going through from shorter paths to very long paths. And how do I know it's a short path or a long path? Because the individual vertical lines represent steps in this journey. They're steps in the journey. They are not necessarily pages. That is important to know. This is a web-based tracking element. This is a web-based metric. So it you can think of it in terms of web pages, but the, the real way you should think about it is in terms of URLs, unique URLs. So as I go through this and I hover over one of these vertical lines, it shows me that this is clinique.com slash makeup dash clinique. So I'm, I'm improvising what comes after the, um, the area that I can't see anymore. But you can see this is a screenshot of the individual's page at the time. Now, there's nine people, I believe, who are highlighted right now that all saw this page. So this, this individual thumbnail or screenshot belongs to one of the nine. If I was to click on, let's just say, uh, let's find someone with the longest path. Here we go. Let's, let's click on user tester 101. Uh, interesting name. So I'm going to click on that person. And when I click on that person, I actually get to see their individual version of each page. So here, when I hover over any one of these individual lines now, I actually see, okay, this page here is this page here. So this version is what it looked like for uh, user tester 101. The reason that we talk about this as unique URLs instead of pages is because anytime something happens on the page, which changes the URL, it's going to register a new unique URL and therefore the interactive path flow will get a new little line on it. And so when we start looking up here at things like these pages, they look like unique pages, but as I go from one to the next to the next, you'll start realizing that they all look pretty much the same. And as I scroll to the right here, I'm gonna be able to see the detail on those pages. Okay, now you can see all of these experiences, they all look the same. I mean, look, every screenshot is the same, but what's happening here? So if I say expand all, I can see, ah, they clicked on WN48 oat. Then they clicked on CN52 neutral, WN46 golden, golden neutral, WN44T. The person who's using the site is actually just clicking on colors, which is changing the picture on the screen and it's changing the URL to identify which color shade should be shown along with the associated photography. So the page itself is the same, but because the URL changes, we get a new path, uh, a new step in our interactive path flow. Going through and, and hovering over each can give us a little bit of insight, 
but actually saying expand all to actually get our detail for individual user. In this case, it was user tester 101. We can actually see all of the elements that went into this interactive path flow, what it was, whether it was a scroll, and then they clicked on a category, then they clicked on a uh, skin concern, they said scroll, they clicked. Hovering over any one of these pictures, you will actually see an animated version of all the interactions. The blue dot is the click. When you are just looking at this baseline, you can scroll from left to right and look at those blue dots. Those are the clicks that advanced people from step to step or from the stage or that unique URL. What did they do to change the URL? I, I, in other words, change the site, change the page to get to this next, this next element, then the next element, the next element. So this is really great way to understand your customer's progression through your site, trying to complete that task that you asked them to do. There's statistics above the actual details for their journey that you also should note when you're doing analysis of an individual person and their perceived outlier status in terms of having a longer journey than everyone else. We can see that it took user tester 101 three minutes and 53 seconds, which we now see is actually an average amount of time. So there was 23 screens visited along a common path, 38 interactions, which is deemed the most effort because it was in fact the most effort clicking on so many different color variations. And that does tell us something that this person's having a hard time finding the color of foundation that she needs. But in terms of the time spent, we can see that it actually was about average. And she was sort of just happily clicking through, maybe not happily, but she was clicking through the site to find the color that she needed um, to get to the right product color. There are certainly other elements to the interactive path flow, which I didn't show. I've shared them in previous tips. Certainly add a comment uh, to the video if there's something that you want me to cover or recover, bring it up to date and maybe some new functionality. But that's it for interactive path flow. The basics are there. Hopefully this taught you a lot. That's going to be it for now, but I will be back again in seven days with another user testing tip of the week.